So, hi everyone, I made it to the Spirit Quest Sanctuary uh, near the town of Iquitos. After we arrived in Iquitos, we were picked up by a bus, the whole group together, because we were all organized on the same flight, and then we got uh, the bus to a little port. I mean, not, I mean, it's a place where boats tied up, it was no, nothing more grand than that. Um, and the boats brought us about another 30 minutes along the Amazon, which is still blowing my mind. Like, yeah, then I went down the Amazon, um, and we arrived here. Um, so I'm going to try and show you just some of it. I, I'm going to try and be careful. I might cut this off if other people walk around because I don't want to interfere with anyone's privacy or the experiences they're having. So, um, but as you can see, it's all incredibly sturdy um, and all natural, um, bar the old light switch and, uh, and light bulb that you'll see. But it feels like some kind of wonderland. This is the sort of incredible tree house that you wished you had as a kid but uh, never happened. Um, so I'm just walking along this, this, this walkway here, heading towards both where the accommodation blocks are, it's about uh, 18 rooms, um, which are uh, at either side of the ceremonial maloka, uh, where the magic's going to take place um, for the first time later today. So, so far it's been just great meeting everybody, um, because we kind of already have something in common, everybody's in a similar sort of headspace, or certainly their outlook is positive and everyone's learning about each other, learning about what's going on. Some people have been here before, which is obviously a good sign because you wouldn't want, you know, it to just be first time people. The fact that more people are coming back suggests that it's a good place and you'd want to come back. I was climbing up some stairs to up a, a hill. This is all on the banks in the Amazon. At the moment the water's really low, but a few months ago it was super high and abnormally high. Uh, Don Howard was, was telling us, uh, meaning it was almost to their doorstep, um, global warming manifesting here as well. Um, so um, I'll stop for a second and turn around and behind me, I uh, don't know if you can see, is that's the Maloka, that's where everything's going to happen. There's another bigger Maloka where we have Dieta food served, so it's been a relief for me, I think for everyone to have food that you know is going to be okay it is part of the dieta you're not breaking the rules accidentally and it's not possible to break them intentionally unless you you actually brought a bunch of stuff with you that you shouldn't have had um, so yeah so we haven't had a ceremony yet um, with ayahuasca but we did have um, a ceremony with mapacho earlier today which is sacred to tobacco I'm not a smoker, so it's an interesting experience. Um, I think like a lot of people, I've sort of dabbled a little bit in the past, but um, mostly for destructive reasons, so this was completely different. Um, no filter, just uh, tobacco put in um, a thin piece of paper, standard looking sort of paper, although they're big, thick things. They look kind of like a big cigar. Um, and that was about trying to get us in the right headspace and sort of, um, relax us. Um, so we gathered down in the ayahuasca kitchen, which is a short, like, two minutes walk through the jungle uh, where they're preparing ayahuasca, and we not only then uh, smoked the the mapacho and blew the smoke in uh, the seven key directions, so not just north, south, east, west, but also sky and land and then down on your chest, on your heart, um, and all this sort of ceremonial style activity combined with the natural effects of the tobacco, it was extremely calming, extremely um, restful and reflective, the whole mood, the ambience changed, people walked out from the kitchen area, uh, which is just like a roof and uh, a massive vat of ayahuasca um, boiling there, um, and just Naturally, everyone just started touching the, the trees, um, looking at the plants, reflecting with their own thoughts. Um, it was really nice. I found it quite hard to turn off my internal kind of dialogue like, oh, should I do this? What's everybody else doing? What's everybody thinking I'm doing? And so on, like, rather than just getting with it. But gradually, I managed to have at least a few moments where I was just in the moment doing my thing. Um, after that, we had some more talk and we yesterday in the first day we had a plant workshop where we got uh, some of the admixture plants not only the, the ayahuasca but also the other plants that go into it 
um, which I won't try and recall uh, off the top of my head, but we were told their nature and we got given them to smell and touch and then we crush them um, in our own bowls and they will go into the mix which will be the ayahuasca for the ceremony after tonight. So we kind of invested ourselves in this um, and at the Mapacho ceremony today we um, put um, a final ingredient to it and you blow the smoke on it and you think about what intention you're bringing um, and what you're sharing with other people as well as what you would like um, the sort of energy to be of it. So all of that was just really uh, calming and enjoyable and really I think puts you in the mindset of okay we're invested and it's a personal element in this process. None of it um, felt hokey or silly and none of it felt overblown either and I think the two would be closely aligned. This was about the real experience and in fact Don Howard, the, uh, one of the principal shaman here was just saying don't do this to please me, don't do this if you don't feel it, don't smoke this if you're not going to do it honestly. So if you, you don't want to do it, don't do it just to pretend, don't do it to try and make other people feel like you're doing the right thing. And I, I really like that attitude, he's just saying, you know, if you're going to do it, do it with respect and do it with, with the right reasons, because otherwise it really is pointless for you and for other people. Um, so the they then um, sang a couple of ikaros, uh, which are the healing songs, which are part of the ayahuasca ceremony, um, uh, which many people will have read about if you've read anything about ayahuasca. So having got the intake of the mapacho and we've sat down again, um, they sang these really uh, rhythmic, beautiful songs, um, which left everybody in a kind of state of well, deep relaxation. Everything felt like it was happening in slow motion after that very restful, very peaceful. Um, we kind of drifted away after that to go and have uh, some lunch. So for having described that, my own sort of personal story has been I woke up at about 4 a.m. Uh, with diarrhea and then um, shortly after that with some uh, mega vomiting as well. So that was not good and that's, you know, there's been no ceremony. This is meant to happen later. Um, so I was feeling really rough. I was like, oh, should I, I take medication or not? So I took something and then immediately threw up. So effectively I didn't take anything. Um, and I really wanted to go to the Mapacho ceremony. Um, and so I was about to get ready and then threw up again. I said to John Howard, you know, I, I don't think I can do this. And he said, no, it's the jungle. If you need to throw up, you just throw up wherever. Um, and you'll, you'll miss out and you'll fall behind sort of process of readying that everybody else is getting so you should come um, I'm, I'm so grateful that he said that because it took the decision wouldn't take the decision away from me I was free to do what I wanted but it took the, the thinking from me because I had a strong recommendation and I went and smoking the mapacho actually calmed the nausea in my stomach and so on so I'm not feeling fantastic right now but things are obviously improved I'm able to talk to you for one thing um, and it was a very, very positive thing. So I need to just try and focus on what's important here. Um, it, my, I mean, I, I'm kind of puzzled. It's not like uh, I ate anything crazy. Everything is distinctly not crazy here. It's all um, boiled vegetables and boiled or grilled uh, fish, a little bit of chicken here and there. There's no salt, no pepper, no spices, nothing. So you sort of eat it and go, hmm, not really full. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's some fruit, fruit juices and things like that. There's uh, herbal teas, but, but that's everything. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit rough, but it looks like I'm going to be okay for the ceremony where <laughs> vomiting and other things are expected. Um, but I wanted to just record something to say, look, here I am. Um, I made it before, one last thing before an actual ayahuasca ceremony. Um, I it was suggested to me by my roommate, um, I'm getting to know a great guy, um, that maybe the illness was nerves. I don't know. I don't feel really nervous. I feel suitably cautious, respectful, I guess a little nervous, because um, I don't know what it's going to feel like, what it's going to be like. But um, I, I don't know if it was a physical expression of nerves that I wasn't recognizing I had. Um, I don't know. Well, Maybe that will become clearer. 
Um, everyone, as I said here, is, there's a good feeling about this group. Um, the accommodation is really, is really nice. I wouldn't even say basic, I mean basic in, in one sense, this is not like a fancy hotel, but it's all very uh, clean and nice and um, there's plenty of, uh, everything's being looked after basically, we don't have to worry about sorting out our food and so on and the rooms are cleaned uh, by the staff here and and so on. Um, so it just feels pretty dreamy, <laughs> pretty amazing just to be present here. Um, there's also a, a tower over there, I didn't want to interrupt people who were there, um, where you climb up and there's hammocks strung at two different levels. Uh, I believe there's a thing called a star deck for star gazing, so I'll definitely have to check that out at some point too. Um, but that'll do for now, and next time I speak to you, things will be different. <laughs>